Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Tyler and welcome to episode three of our Building a Interpreter from Scratch series. So in the previous episode, we finished the AST types for our basic interpreter and the parser that we're gonna be implementing today. However, I wanted to quickly note that in the description of all of these videos, there will be a link to a GitHub page containing all of the source code for every single lesson. So um, previously, I never made GitHub source code links available. Here, I'm deciding to do so as there's gonna be a lot to this. And if you get lost or just wanna go back and actually have a reference um, to follow along, then you can follow along here. Plus, I'll also go through and actually add comments um, to the source and stuff like that. That'll make it a little bit easier to read. So currently there's episode one and two right here. And the other thing I wanted to show you guys is a really cool reference called AST Explorer. And it's at HTTPS AXTExplorer.net. This will also be linked in the description below. But what this is, is it's a way for us to kind of check our AST against a popular, um, other popular programming language parsers. For example, here's the parson, parser for JavaScript using Acorn. And we can see what happens when we type in code. So let x equals 45. And we can see that it actually shows us kind of what we should kind of be striving for, right? A variable declaration statement with a declarator of an identifier and an initial value of literal. And we can kind of see how, do, how does JavaScript um, handle these kind of complex statements, right? So how do they handle a function declaration or parameter lists and things like that? So if you ever get lost or want to extend the language, but you also kind of want to base it off of a language of your favorite choosing, you can actually do this and kind of play around and just see what should be happening, right? It's really useful for things like order of operations. Um, so we can see here that this is what we'll have working by the end of this video. We'll have things like this working, etc where we'll be able to take in binary expressions and we'll want it to be um, right recursive. As we can see here, it's not left recursive. So let's actually get started now and implement the parser for our basic language types that we have so far. So we're gonna implement a parser that'll support our program node, numeric literal, an identifier, and a binary expression. But the last thing we need to do before we can actually get started with that is change some code in the Lexer. Currently, we have a few different token types. We have close paren, open paren equals binary operators, let, identifiers, and numbers. However, we need to add an additional type called an EOF token. And this signifies the end of file. So you can think of an EOF as a token that's not really visible. Uh, it's not visible, but it signifies the last character in a file. This is gonna be really useful and cause a lot less issues when we're in our parser itself. So we're gonna add this token. And all we're gonna do is inside of our tokenized function, after our while loop, before we return the tokens, let's just do return, or sorry, we're gonna do tokens.push, and we're just gonna add a token which is gonna have the type of token type.eof, and the value is just gonna be eof or uh, end of file, like so. And that's all we're gonna do. We're just gonna make sure that we actually add our end of file token, um, just in case. So that way we don't really have to worry about that. So now we can actually get started with episode three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the pan prompt, type in copy episode two, and we're gonna make sure this is recursive. So I'm gonna make sure to add a dash r, and I'm gonna create our episode three parser folder. And then we're gonna CD into episode three, like that, and there we go. So now we can actually view this in VS Code and get started with our parser. So let's open this in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so this is everyone's favorite part typically. The parser is the most fun to implement and the, also the most complicated but we're gonna walk through this and go step by step. So let's create a parser.ts file. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to want to import our types from our AST. So we're gonna to wanna to import a statement, a program, a expression, a binary expression, 
a uh, numeric literal as well as an identifier like so. So we're going to import all of the types we need from our uh, from these files so that we can actually get started with that. We're also going to need to import a um, node type. We're going to need to op import, uh, sorry, not node type. We're going to need to import from the Elixir. So we're going to need the tokenize function. So we're going to import, there we go, if I can type, from dot slash and we're going to get this from the lexer.ts. So we're going to need our tokenize as well as our token and token type values like this. So now that we have all these, let's create a class. And we're going to export this as default. And we're going to call it um, parser. Now, the job of the parser is to take in our tokens that we created from our tokenizer. So what we're going to do is we're going to do const Actually, we'll make this a private variable. We'll call it tokens. It's of type token array. And let's give it a default value of an empty array. Next, we're going to want to create a public method. And we're going to call this produce AST, like so. And it's going to take in a string, which is the source code. And what we want to do is we want to return a program. So we're going to return a program, like so. So I'm going to type return program. And now let's actually create this program. So we're going to do const program is equal to, and we're going to define a program type. So we're going to say this is of type program. And what we want is for a program, so we can recall, a program node consists of this right here. So let's just copy this over and get rid of that. And there we go. Now we have our program type that we can produce like so. Let's also use the source code to produce our tokens array. So we can say this dot tokens is equal to and we'll call our tokenize function. And we're going to pass in the source code like so. So there we go. Now we have the ability to produce an AST of type program where each element in this body is going to be an array of statements. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to loop while we have tokens left in our program. So what we're going to do is we're going to do while not EOF like that. And we're going to call this this dot not EOF. So we're just going to loop while we're not at the end of the file. So we're going to create a function for this private not EOF, which is going to return a Boolean. And all we're going to do is we're just going to do return this dot tokens of zero dot type is equal to or is not equal to. And we're going to do token type dot EOF. So what this is saying is return this dot tokens. Basically, the first token dot type is not equal to end of file. And we're just going to return true if it isn't. If it is, then we know we're at the end of the file and we should not continue parsing. So that's basically it for that. We're going to parse until the file. And there we go. And while we're parsing, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to append to the body every single statement we find. So we're going to call uh, this dot, or sorry, we're going to do program.body.push, and we're going to push on a new statement. So we're going to do this dot. Um, STMT like that. Now a statement, I'm going to call it parse statements. This function we haven't created, but let's go ahead and create it. And this is going to be basically the entry point for our parser. So in here, I'm going to go down here and go private parse statement, which returns in statements like so. And there we go. This will actually be the end of our produce AST function for a good bit of time. There's not going to need to be much that we do in here until later we actually get into some complex error handling. So I'm actually going to just going to minimize this. Okay. So to produce a statement, we kind of need to look at our AST and say, well, we don't really have any statements that we're trying to deal with. We've already dealt with the program, which is the only type of statement. These are all expressions. So for now, we actually don't have anything to parse. In the future, we'll have different types of statements like function expressions, um, or sorry, function declaration statements, try catch blocks, 
variable declarations, while loops, etc., etc. But for now, we don't really have anything. So we skip to parse expression. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do return this dot parse expression, like so. And now we can actually kind of get started doing stuff. So we're going to create our parse expression function, which is going to return an expression. Now, since expression inherits from statements, this works, right? So an expression is a statement, but a statement is not an expression. So now what we can do is we can say, okay, what type do we want to parse first? Let's for now just parse the primary expressions like numeric literals and identifiers. So we're going to create a function called parse primary expression. It's going to return an expression. And what we're going to do is we need to parse and determine what our current token is to determine whether we're an identifier or a numeric literal. So to get access to the current token, I'm just going to say tk is equal to this dot's tokens at index 0. However, this looks really ugly, and in the future, we might want to change the way this actually works. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to be its own function. So we're going to come up here and add a function called ent. And all it's going to do is return this dots tokens at index zero as a token just in case typescript has any issues with that and there we go so now we have this at function which will simply return the current token we're at so this dots there we go and now we're just going to do token dots type just like that so now we can do a big if case or we can actually do a switch case as well so we're going to do switch on tk and we're going to handle the case where it's of type token type dots and we want to be able to handle an identifier right so what we're going to do is we're just going to return an identifier like so so what we need to do is we need to create an identifier type so we're going to say this kind is identifier and the symbol is equal to um, this dot at dot value. However, there's an issue here. If we think about how this would work, right, let's just kind of take a quick look at our code by actually first calling this function from inside our parse expression. So we're going to do return this dot uh, parse primary. And there we go. And then also just quickly adding a default return um, as we're just going to lie real quick to our compiler. There we go, right? So let's imagine what would actually happen if we were to pass in a source that looks something like this. If we just passed in the variable foobar into a program, what would happen is we would have two tokens in our tokens array. It would not be the end of the file, so what would happen is it would call program.body.push, it would call parse statement, which would return a statement. Parse statement will call parse expression, parse expression will call parse primary, and parse primary is going to get the type of the token we're currently at, which again is of type identifier, right, because foobar would be an identifier. It's going to hit this switch, and it's going to return an identifier. However, though, returning back through the call chain, it's going to iteratively keep doing this forever, since we're not actually getting rid of that token. We want to advance, so we're at the EOF. So what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of doing this dot at dot value, we're going to create a function called advance, which simply returns the previous token and increments it, or aka gets rid of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called uh, next. Sorry, there we go. Or we can also call it eats is a common term you'll see. So what we're going to do is we're going to do let's or uh, const prev is equal to this dot at as a token or what we can do is we could just do this dot tokens dot shift and say it's a token because we know it'll be a token and now we have this previous token we can just simply return prev like so so now we have the ability to get a token that we were just at as well as advance to the next token and this is just going to remove it from the beginning of the array okay so now instead of calling this dot at dot value we'll call this dot eat dot value. And there we go. Now we have the ability 
to parse a identifier type. Now let's also add support for parsing a token of type uh, number. And what we're going to do is say this is of type numeric literal. This is no longer a number, this or a new identifier, this is a numeric literal. And a numeric literal, if we look at the type, a numeric literal is going to contain a value field containing the actual number entered in the code. So we're going to do value. And what we're going to do is we're going to do parse float of our this.eats dot value, like so. Now, the reason we're doing parse float, not parse int, is because currently we only support um, integers. But in the future, we will support floating point values. And right now, um, we want to make sure that we can actually parse those and handle those. So there we go. Now we have the ability in our parse primary expression to actually parse a primary expression. And in the default case, instead of returning like this, what we're going to end up doing, right, is this is going to trick the compiler for type scripts, right? What we're going to do is we're going to do a console dot error. And we're just going to say unexpected token found during parsing. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually give the token that was just found. So this dot at like so. And then we're just going to do deno dot exit of one. And now we don't need to trick the compiler. So what we're doing here is we're saying if we get to a private uh, primary expression, we're not going to handle anything else. At this point in time, the most um, high priority types are primary expressions. They are literal types. It cannot get any more priority than that. So if we make it down here and we have no clue what this token is, then we must have gotten to an unexpected token, right? Maybe they typed in two parentheses instead of one or something like that. Now that we have this working, let's actually go ahead and quickly test this out before we implement binary expressions because they're a little bit more complex. So let's create a main.ts file. And in here, let's also create a folder that's going to contain all of our, um, not compiler, we'll call it front end code. And I'm going to add the AST, the lexer, as well as the parser. And there we go. And now we're just going to import parser from our front end dot slash parser dot ts. And in here, we're just going to implement our REPL function like so. So this is going to be async function of REPL. Let's just make sure we actually don't forget to call it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do const parser is equal to a new parser. So we have our parser now. We're going to just do a while true loop. So we're going to keep iterating basically forever. And I'm just going to do a const.log um, REPL v 0.1, right? So now we have this REPL that we can use. And what we're going to do is we're going to do const is equal to prompt, which is going to actually ask the user in the terminal for some input. We're just going to do a greater than sign because that's what everyone does. And then we're just going to do if no inputs or if input dot contains or not contains, sorry, dot includes exits, then we're just going to do a deno dot exit. So this is just going to check for no user or exit keyword. There we go. And now we know if we make it to this point, the user wants to enter code. So we're going to do const AST is equal to or const program, I'll call it, is equal to, and we're going to do parser dot produce AST, and we're going to pass in our source code, which is of type um, input. So we're going to do inputs. And there we go. Uh, I also don't need to make this asynchronous. I don't know why I thought I did. And there we go. Now we can actually console.log our program that we're getting back. And remember, our program is of type program. So let's actually quickly give this a quick run and just see if this all works. So we can open up our terminal, clear it out, and do a deno run dash a because we want to um, allow terminal access and in the future we'll also want other stuff so we're just going to do dash a main dot ts 
here we can see our REPL is starting up and we can enter something like exit, middle exit. Let's enter something like the value 10. And what do you know? We get a program type, right? It's of kind program. The body though is a single value of numeric literal. We can enter 10 X in foobar. And what you'll see is we get a program which has an array containing three statements. Now these three statements each are themselves expressions, but we can see that this works. Now let's go ahead and try typing something like let's, and we can see unexpected token found during parsing, value, let, type of two, which is, if we recall, type two is zero, one, two, oh, a let token, so that makes sense. So there we go. Now let's actually go ahead and implement um, the binary expression and really see how the recursive descent parser works. So let's actually get started now and implement a binary expression. So currently we have the ability to eat a token, return the token we're at, and return if we're at an end of file. What we also want to be able to do is parse from a statement. We go to a parser, parse expression, then we parse a primary expression. Before we do that though, a primary expression has the highest order of precedence. So what we probably want to do is we want to handle orders of precedence. Currently the highest order of precedence is a primary, primary expression. However, just above that would be an additive, and just above that would be a multi multiplicative expression. Above that would be a unary, or sorry, below that uh, would be a unary, which we'll implement in the next episode, hopefully. So these are kind of the orders of precedence that we'll be dealing with. A primary expression is the highest order of precedence. We want this value to be evaluated first, right? A unary expression is just above that. Then we have multiplicative, an additive expression. Here we would have something like a comparison. Then we would have things like logical expressions. So things like the and and or keywords. And then up here we'd have things like function function call and uh, a member as well as things like expression. Now, for now, we're not going to deal with any of these, but I just wanted to kind of show you that the order of precedence is important. And it's important to keep in mind that the higher precedence of value is, we actually want to parse that last because that'll actually give it more precedence in the tree itself. So let's get started by implementing the multiplicative Addison or um, comparison expressions. We already have primary out of the way. So let's implement multiplicative and additive. So instead of from parse expression, we call parse primary, let's call call um, additive. So we'll do this dot parse additive expression like so. And we're just going to, for now, just return these up to call stack. So let's create this method called parse expression, which returns a expr type expression, right? Now, what we want to do, because an additive expression has left hand precedence, right? If you do something like 10 plus 5 minus 5, what we want to happen is this whole thing is an additive expression where the operator is minus the right hand side is five and the left hand side is its own additive expression right that's the same thing as wrapping this in parentheses so that's what we want to do we want to implement left hand precedence so to do that we actually parse the left hand value first so we do uh, left is equal to and what we're going to do is we're just going to do this dot parse primary expression because to signify precedence, what we want to do is parse the left-hand side first, which will then parse 10, then we'll actually handle the operators, and this will all bubble up. So we're going to parse a primary expression, which is then going to get these values here. 
Now, after we parse the left-hand side, we actually want to do a while loop to parse the operator token itself. So we're going to do while this dot at dot value is equal to a plus or this dot at dot is equal to a minus. So while there are still operators in between an expression in the right hand side, we're going to parse this. What we're going to want to do is get the operator by doing this dot eat. And what we're going to do is pass in the value like so. Then we're going to want to get access to the right hand side. Because after an operator, after we eat this value, the current value is going to be either a 5 or, for example, it could be another expression, like something like this. So we want to be able to handle that. So write is equal to this dot parse. We're going to parse a primary expression this time. And now we have everything we need to make a binary expression. We have a kind, a left-hand side, a right-hand side, and an operator. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to do const binop of type binary uh, expression has a kind of binary expression, like so. I meant to do equals. There we go. So it has a kind of binary expression as a left value, a right value, and an operator value, like so. And now we have this type of binary expression. Now, you may be tempted to think, oh, so we just return this here, right? We return our binop like so, and we're done. And that's not the case. We actually want to return outside of here. So we want to do return left. But now we're not capturing this binop. And what we want to do to support this left recursive rules is we actually want to say, instead of this, we just want to say left is equal to a new binary expression, like so. And the reason we can't is because this is a constant. Okay, so let's kind of take a look at what we just did. We parsed the left-hand side, and that's because we want to be able to support recursive precedence. Then we can imagine if this is our um, code right here, 10 plus 5 minus 5. What will happen is we'll parse this left-hand side. We'll get a 10. Then we'll get an operator because we'll be found at a plus. We'll get a right-hand side, which is a 5 at this case. Then we're going to say that is equal to the left. So this whole thing becomes this right here. Then we get a minus. So we're back in this loop again. Then we get our right, which will be a 5. And this whole thing will now become left again through this assignment, and we return it up and bubble it up the tree. And by the time we're done with this, we'll just have an EOF token, and our EOF in our body will contain these proper types. So that's a lot. That's a lot to take in, but let's actually give this a shot and see if this works. So, um, did not mean to open Discord. There we go. <laughs> okay, let's actually give this a quick run. So deno run dash a main dot ts let's make sure we actually call parse additive and we do there we go so now we can do something like 10 minus 5 and what do you know you can actually see that we get a type of program our body contains one element and that is a binary expression where the left hand side is a numeric literal right 10 the right hand side is a numeric literal in the operator is minus. This also works like this. So now we would expect to get 10 minus x plus y. And what do you know? This is recursive like so. We get a program, a body, binary. The left hand side contains the 10 minus x. The right hand side contains the y and the operator separating these. This is a left, a right, and this whole thing is a binary. This is also a binary. So it's very recursive. Um, if you have any questions and want to go more into depth with this, ask me on my Discord, and I'll be sure to step through this one-on-one -on -one if you'd like. Okay, so now we actually want to implement R, right, 10 times 2. Ah, times isn't supported, right? This is only an additive expression. So all we're going to do is we're just going to copy this block, and instead, from parse additive, we're going to change the name to parse 
to multiplicative. I think I spelled that right. And what we're going to do is from additive, we're going to call parse multiplicative expression. Why? Why are we going to call a multiplicative? Because it has more precedence. So we want to parse it further down the tree. Remember, more precedence equals further down the tree. And we're going to also do the same call here. So parse multiplicative expression. And there we go. Now to just change this, we do a mine or a um, slash and we do a star. However, if we also wanted to support modulus, we'll put this in right here. This is exactly where we'll support the modulus operator like so. So I'm just going to add it like so. I'm going to add the modulus operator while we're at it. And while we're at it, I'm also going to change the lexer to support the modulus operator. So in here, we're going to change this line like so. We're going to add a new rule to support the modulus operator, which is on the exact same precedence of multiplication division, like so. So there we go. Now we have support for these three operators, and these are all multiplicative, so they will parse primary because that's further down the chain. Let's give this a quick run and make sure this works. So we can do 10 plus 5 times 3, and what you'll see that's really neat is this follows the order of operations. Right? If we think of this statement, 10 plus 5 times 3, we want to evaluate 5 times 3 first, and then we want to add 10 to it. And that's exactly what this says. We have an operator of plus, the left-hand side is 10, and the right-hand side says evaluate this block before getting to this plus operation. So this is really cool. We can see the right-hand side has precedence. We could also do 10 uh, modulus 2 minus 3, and sure enough, we get the modulus operator, and now it's left hand because left side recursion is followed over right hand side because of the precedence, just like our order of operations. Now, the one thing we're missing besides exponents is PEMDAS for our parentheses. We're not handling parentheses. So if we do 34 minus 5 times 2, we expect this to work, but it doesn't because we haven't handled a parenthesized expression. So let's go ahead and add support for a parenthesized expression. And this is actually really simple to implement. What we're going to do is inside of our default, um, right before the default, we're going to say, okay, we've made it this far, right? We've handled the case of an identifier. We've handled a number. In the future, we'll handle Booleans as well as null types. But here, we also want to handle the case where we're at a token type of open paren, just like that. And now what we're going to do is really important. We want to eat, so this dot eats, we're going to eat uh, opening, eat the opening parenthesis. Then we want to get the value. So const value is equal to this dot parse expression. So we want to get the value inside of the parenthesis. And we also want to eat the paren. And then we just do return value like so. And this wants us to be in a block. That's why it's yelling at us. And there we go. Now, there's one big issue with this, and that is we're not going to get error messages if there's a closing print missing. And I really want to have error messages if an unexpected token is found. For example, imagine inside of our binary expression, if we parse this, we maybe want to have a value um, arise if it's something we don't define. So for example, if we parse a closing, if we parse this value and we don't get a closing paren, let's create a function that will actually eat, but if a value is not defined, like we can say it expects a token type of closing paren, and we give an error message like unexpected token found inside, um, inside parenthesis expression, like that, and then we can do this dot adds, like so. So imagine we actually want to pass in our eat function um, an optional parameter like this. And let's just call it eat, uh, let's call it expect. So expect is going to do the exact same thing as eat, however, it's going to also log an error if it fails. 
So let's go ahead and implement our expect function. And all we're going to do is we're just going to do private expect. It takes in a um, type of token type. And it takes in an ERR of, let's just do any for now. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do if, actually we'll get our previous value, so prev is equal to dot tokens dot shift as a token. Then we're going to say if uh, no prev or uh, prev dot type is equal to type then what we're going to want to do is throw an error. So we're just going to do console.error. So we're going to do parser error, and then we're going to pass in our ERR, and this uh, we're going to pass in the previous value that we are expecting. And then we're going to do expecting, and we're going to pass in type, like so. There we go. So not the most beautiful error message, but it should help a lot with debugging. Then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do deno dot exits, give an error code of one, and then return our prev if we were successful. So now this expect function is going to handle exactly what we want. I'm also going to get rid of this any type because I don't really care that it's any type for now. And there we go. So now if we look at our code, we see that our produce AST function is actually going to make a call to our Lexer. It's going to get all of our tokens. It's going to create this program type. While we're not at the end of the file, we're going to push through and parse every statement we locate. Then we're going to return the program. Inside a parse statement, we don't really have anything to parse. No variable declarations, functions, nothing like that. So we're going to parse an expression. Inside a parse expression, we don't really have anything to parse either. In the future, we'll be checking the uh, look ahead. We'll be looking ahead to see what tokens there are. But for now, we don't need to look ahead. We can look at our current token and determine it. So we return a value from a additive expression. An additive expression simply gets the left-hand side. And you can imagine, right, if this is our expression, 45 times 3 minus 5, what will happen is it'll parse the left-hand side. That will go to the primary in here. Then, so we'll get back a 45. Then we're in the primary at this point. So it'll actually see this star. It'll parse the star and the right-hand side. So it'll actually give um, this. 45 times 3 will come back here as a binary expression. Then we'll parse the operator, which will be minus. The right-hand side will be 5. And we'll return this binary expression, which encloses this one. And that is why we do the left precedence, as well as why we do additive before multiplicative. Because multiplicative expressions have more precedence. So, hope you guys understood this, and hopefully this was a good um, concept to learn. In the next episode, we'll actually get started by traversing this tree that we're creating. Right. So here we can do 45 minus 5 times 3. Uh, let's do 5 times 3 plus 4. And we see unexpected token inside print size. Oh, it's because this was supposed to be, right? A, another thing. So we do 45 minus 5 times 34 divided by foo bar. And... Oh, I messed up the um, eat function. <laughs> um, in the expect function... It's if the type does not equal that type, then we want to throw an error, right? This is valid code right there. So we'll do 45 minus foo bar times x plus y. And there we go, right? This all works. So there we go. In the next episode, we'll actually get started implementing our interpreter. So that's going to be really exciting for those of you who want to see how to implement a tree walk interpreter. And yeah, and I'll see you guys in the next video.